Vote counting continues in South Africa's presidential and provincial elections. Early results posted on the website of the Independent Electoral Commission, the IEC, show the African National Congress, the ANC, with 42.54%, followed by the Democratic Alliance with 23.97%, the Nkonto with Siswe, or MK Party, with 9.83%, and the Economic Freedom Fighters, the EFF, with 9.37%. Only 9,314 out of 23,293 voting districts have been counted. Professor Sipo Sipi is a political analyst and a former deputy vice chancellor for institutional support at the University of Zululand. He tells me the race is on for which parties will be part of the coalition government in the event the ANC does not win an absolute victory. The ANC is in the lead. And the ANC was expected to be in the lead. And then the, the ANC is followed by the DA, which has been the main opposition party. And then the third party would be EFF or the MK party. All these parties have run a very spirited uh, campaign. The EFF has been very strong because uh, despite the ANC running a spirit campaign, it is the very same ANC that has failed the people. And the, both the EFF and the DA, Democratic Alliance, were able to exploit the failures of the ANC. In that regard, when you listen to young people in this country, they talk about change. This is why this election are seen as a game changers. Actually, for many people, they say the sense of excitement is similar to 1994. And we've seen the expression of that with the number of people who have come out to vote. According to the IEC, they're talking about uh, 60% voters coming out. Professor, uh, I look at the Electoral Commission map. I see a lot of green representing the ANC and a lot of yellow representing the uh, DA party. I see also red in some parts of the country. Which parts of the country are their strongholds? Well, the stronghold of the ANC is in the outlying provinces province like Limpopo, where the ANC has always gotten above 70 percent. And at the moment, it's getting around 72. That's a projection. And it could even go higher. It's also northwest. There are outlying areas which are sparsely populated. But the, the real votes will come from two provinces, or at least three provinces. It will be the Gauteng and the Guazulu Natal. Those two constitute almost 50 percent of the votes. So ultimately, when the tally comes, it will be what happens in those uh, two provinces. And the Western Cape has always been a stronghold of the DA and it will continue to be a stronghold of the DA. But uh, those who are in the space of projection are beginning to say, in terms of what they see and the pattern, they see the ANC going as far as 42%, followed by the DA at 22%, followed by MK at 13% and followed by the EFF. Those are the four main parties that may be part of the parties that will form coalitions. Professor Sipo Sipe is a political analyst and a former deputy vice chancellor for institutional support at the University of Zululand. He was speaking with us from Johannesburg. The Democratic Republic of Congo has finally reformed a government some six months after President Felix Tshisekedi was sworn in for a second term. The country conducted its general election on December 20th, 2023. It was followed by bitter negotiations between various coalition partners that had helped Tshisekedi cross the finish line. In a dispatch publicized early on Wednesday, Prime Minister Sama Lukonde, who resigned in February, was formally replaced by Judith Suminwa. Mrs. Suminwa had been appointed on April 1st, but had not taken up the task yet. 
Now she will have to present her program, including budgetary proposals, to the National Assembly. The National Assembly is also expected to formalize, approve the new cabinet, which comprises 54 ministers. Tshisekedi expects that the endorsement for his cabinet will go as planned, especially since he enjoys a majority with 406 MPs out of the 500 on his side. There have been major changes in the new government, notably in the security dockets. Just over a week after the failed coup d'etat and persistent war and armed groups, the Tshisekedi government has changed the ministers of defense and security. Former Vice President and ex warlord Jean-Pierre Lobemba is no longer leading the Ministry of Defense. He will now be Deputy Prime Minister in charge of transport. Bemba will be replaced at the Defense Ministry by Guy Mwadiamvita, a close associate of President Tshisekedi and member of the President's UDPS party. The Ministry of the Interior and Security is now occupied by Jean Kwemeni Shaban, also close to the Congolese head of state, who replaces another close friend, Peter Kazadi. Tshisekedi has entrusted the Ministry of Justice to Konstanty Mutamba, 35 years, who comes from the moderate opposition and was an unsuccessful candidate in the December 2023 presidential election. Christophe Lutundula leaves the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and will be replaced by Telezi Kaiwamba, Patrick Muyeye, uh, the Minister for Communication and Government Spokesman, has been reappointed. The new government should set about implementing President Shigeji's program for his second term in office. According to the Congolese Head of State's Communications Director, Eric Nyindu, the new government is a mission team which should work to consolidate the achievements of Tshisekedi's first term in office.